The Important Role of Genetic Screening All expectant parents want what's best for their babies. As you prepare to grow your family, it's important to know that there are screening tests available that can help you understand the potential for any issues so that you can make the best decisions for you and your baby. There are a variety of methods used today to determine risk during pregnancy. Screening tests are done at different points during pregnancy and for different purposes, but each is performed with the goal of assessing possible complications. It's important to understand the difference between screening tests and diagnostic tests. Screening tests do not give definitive answers, but diagnostic tests, such as chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis, can provide definitive information about a potential problem. That's why diagnostic tests are often done after a screening test has identified an increased chance of an issue in a pregnancy. Carrier screening and non-invasive prenatal screening are genetic screening tests that are done early on to inform the care of your pregnancy and baby. Genetic screening has been made possible by advances in technology, but they are a lot like the screens pregnant women have been having for decades. You can think of genetic screens like ultrasounds for DNA. We can get a better understanding of genetic screens by going over some of the basics of genetics. Inside every person, there are trillions of cells. Cells in different parts of the body have different functions, but almost all of them contain the same genetic information. And most of that information, it's stored in compact chunks called chromosomes. Chromosomes are composed of tightly packed DNA. DNA is like the blueprint for a person. Small segments of DNA act as the recipes for individual proteins. Those segments are called genes. Genes pass along family characteristics like hair and eye color. They can also pass on genetic diseases, even if the parents don't have any symptoms. Non-invasive prenatal screening can help determine if a pregnancy is at heightened risk for a common chromosome condition. Carrier screening is performed at the gene level and determines the baby's risk of having a condition passed down from the mother and father. Typically, a cell contains 46 total chromosomes, organized into 23 pairs. One half of each pair comes from the egg, and the other half from the sperm. If an extra chromosome gets passed on from either the egg or the sperm, an individual will have a condition known as trisomy. Depending on which chromosomal pair has an extra chromosome, this can lead to specific health issues, which can range from mild to very severe. The pair of sex chromosomes determines the baby's sex, XY for male and XX for female. Sometimes there may be too many or too few sex chromosomes, resulting in potential health issues. There can also be changes in the structure of the chromosomes. In rare cases, a tiny piece of a chromosome is missing. This is called a microdeletion. These can lead to developmental challenges and health issues. Non-invasive prenatal screening can help identify the chance of a chromosome condition in a pregnancy. During all pregnancies, small pieces of DNA from the baby's placenta enter the mother's bloodstream. Those fragments are called cell-free DNA. Non-invasive screening uses a simple blood draw from the mother's arm to analyze cell-free DNA. It can look for common trisomies as well as sex chromosome differences and microdeletions. It can also determine the sex of the baby, if the parents want to know. What happens after a non-invasive prenatal screen? Most people receive reassuring results with no further testing recommended. If you do screen positive, you can pursue diagnostic testing, such as amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling, to know for sure if there is an issue. Whether or not you choose to have a diagnostic test, there are many other steps that can be taken to plan and prepare for the birth of a baby. You may choose to discuss options with your provider and explore early interventions for the baby. You may wish to speak with a specialist, or you may just want to talk with a genetic counselor or work with a support group to understand what lies ahead. Family history can reveal a lot about a woman's health and the health of her baby, but many people are carriers of inherited conditions and simply don't know it. In fact, over 80% of children with inherited conditions are born to parents with no known family history. 
To identify these inherited conditions, carrier screening can be done during pregnancy, although getting it done before getting pregnant can maximize your options. Carrier screening looks for changes in the genes of the mother and father called mutations. These mutations can be passed down to a child. In most cases, for a child to be at risk of developing symptoms of a condition, both mother and father need to be carriers for the same condition. This is called recessive inheritance. Being a carrier for a condition means the parent has one normal and one mutated copy of the associated gene. As long as a person has one normal copy, they typically don't have any symptoms. If both parents are carriers for a condition, there is a one in four chance for every pregnancy that the baby will inherit a normal copy of the gene from each parent and will be neither a carrier nor affected. There is a two in four chance for every pregnancy that the baby will inherit a mutated gene from one parent and a normal gene from the other. This would make the baby a carrier like both parents. And like the parents, the baby would not have symptoms Finally, there's a one in four chance with each pregnancy that the baby will inherit two mutated copies of the gene and develop symptoms associated with the condition. There are a few conditions with a different type of inheritance called X-linked recessive inheritance. Sex is determined by the X and Y chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes while males have one X and one Y chromosome. When the gene associated with a condition is on the X chromosome, each male child has a one in two chance of being affected. What happens after carrier screening? If the mother tests negative, no further testing is needed. However, there is a good chance the mother will test positive. More than half of people do. If the mother's results show she is a carrier for a recessively inherited condition, the father should undergo carrier screening. If both parents are found to be carriers for the same recessive condition and a pregnancy is already underway, you can pursue diagnostic testing, such as chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis, to definitively determine if the baby is expected to have symptoms. Remember, even if both partners are carriers, many pregnancies are perfectly healthy. Whether or not you choose to have a diagnostic test, there are many steps you can take to plan and prepare for the birth of your baby. This may include discussing options with your provider, speaking with a specialist, seeking out a facility equipped to manage newborns with genetic conditions to deliver in, or simply talking with a genetic counselor or working with a support group to understand what lies ahead as you prepare for delivery. If carrier screening is done before pregnancy and both parents are found to be carriers for a recessive condition, you may want to consider alternative family building options like in vitro fertilization, also called IVF, where embryos are screened for genetic disease before implantation, adoption, or sperm or egg donation. At Council, we're here to provide you with the information you need to make choices about your health, your family, and your future. For more information, speak with your provider or visit council.com. <music>